what's up guys welcome back to my channel my name is world travel on travel around the world make travel vlogs you want to know where to go follow me on my journey if you haven't subscribed to this channel please subscribe to the channel give the video a like share the video of my returning subscribers Thank you for continuing supporting me. And turn your post notification bell on so that way when I post a video, you'll be the first to be notified. And you notice a lot of people that view this channel is the people that who is not subscribed to the channel as yet. Please subscribe to the channel. So today I'm in London. Making some prop vlogs for you guys here. We go London. Got my wife over there making some kind of videos. Something she's making over there. <laughs> but come on, guys, follow me on my trip. I'm going to do a little bit tour today. Kind of windy today in London, man. But a lot of people getting the exercise going on. Guys, okay, so I'm about to take my bus. Let's look like our bus right there. Our bus. I don't know if you gotta stop it down. It's my bus right there, guys. It's cheaper way to take the bus. Just stop your car, go. Go my bus, guys. Andy going on our bus. Cool. Thanks, sir. Three, four, four. Two, Liverpool Street Station. Ah. Well, I finally got on my bus, guys. Got no travel. Cheap way to get to my destination. I want to show you guys. I don't want to just tell you guys before I get there. I want to show you guys when I get to where I'm going. Give the video a like, share it, subscribe to the channel. Guys, I'm in one of them double decker bus. London, they have lots of. Imagine they had these double decker bus in New Jersey. public service and they would have been chaos upstairs there man it's already big chaos and it's um and it's not even 
here? Yeah. It's that place. That place. That's the market. That place is uh, Borough. Uh, oh, uh, that this place is London Bridge. Oh. London Bridge Borough. Is it tower close around here? Uh, it's a bridge it's church. I'll show you. I'll show you where to get up. Oh, okay. You there? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, this is the market here. Or is up here? Uh, this is London Bridge. Up here? Yeah. Okay. And this place, London Bridge. Yes, sir. Okay. So where those people are going? So where those people are going? These people here, where they are going? These people, where they are going? Oh, uh, the things, maybe cinema or oh. uh, the market is on that. Oh, the market down there. Wow. So a lot of people down here. People. This is London Bridge right here, guys, and that's the market down there. Wow, I never see a market so crowded like this before. Wow. There was London Bridge right back there. This is square. They got a market down there that I was showing you guys. We're gonna get now for a little bit down more from here, and then we're gonna walk a little bit. Guys, this is the close to the London Tower, about nine minutes from here. So this is a very busy area. Normal, right? Then we got the London Towers somewhere that way. On the bridge. The London Bridge. Sorry, the London Tower Bridge. And we got the London Bridge. people here. I don't know why all these people are here. We have a cross, says over town with that way. We gotta go for continue on to Great Tower Street. Great Tower Street. Just walking to the London Tower. Then we got a cross. We got a cross. <laughs> I don't know if it's due there. To get in, okay. Guys, finally, we are here at the London Tower. It's right over there, guys. See the London Tower. 
So we gotta find another way to get some tickets. Do you wanna go inside? So guys right there, the London Tower. Um London Tower right there. Guys, look at my people. Oh, the ticket office. Right, let's go right here. Let's find out. This is the line right here to get the ticket. Got a lot of shops around here. Right there, guys. London Tower. So I'm in the line right now to purchase ticket. Don't know much it costs. But they have the ticket line is right here. How much people are out here? See that right there? Probably the bridge right there. Continue filming a little bit. Can get my ticket? Right over there. Thank you guys. Let me, get, let, me let me see if I get a maybe this could be my thumbnail, I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah. So let's go guys. Continue walking. Guys, so many people here. So many people here. Oh, I see it's right there. We're going to the tower. So, guys, right there is the entrance for the tower. Right there is the entrance. And to get in this tower, guys, is $34. 34 pounds. Which is going to be more US dollars. Nice shop right here. Nice shop. Ooh. Okay, we could explore. A bunch of people is here, guys. Lots of people. So, guys, we're gonna be going in the tower a little bit later on. But for now, let's take a walk. Walk around, and see what happened there. Oh, London coffee. Rich. A lot of different coffee, guys. Oh. Yeah. Mexican street food. Incredible. Mm. Look at the Look at people in here. We're just walking around until our time meet to go in. Guys, there you go to Casa. Right there. Take a few pictures. Those guys, right back there. There's a tower bridge right there. Guys, right there, we got tower bridge right there. And we about to go. Take a walk. So many people here, guys. So many tourists are here.
That guy's right there. There's a tower right over there where I'm going to be explore and a little bit more later on. So let's go. Let's go take a walk. Take a walk. So guys, there we go. Tall bridge. So let's go get on the bridge. Oh, there you go, the tower right there, guys. That's a tower right there. Oh, entry, no entry. Okay. Bridge, that's the tower bridge, right? I don't figure out how to get on this bridge. On the bridge, and we're gonna start walking back to go on the tower. <laughs> yes. So, guys, this is outside. Oh, right there, the stairs, right here. There go the stairs, guys. Oh, there go your, there go your phone. Hello, guys. Are you visiting? Yeah. Have you done a tour yet, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a tour already. There go your phone. It's over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get on that bridge. We tour at 1:30. <laughs> I seen the car. It's a clean one. <laughs> Let's see. I think it could go in too. Can't get on the take of this phone book, guys. No phone. No phone. Where's the phone going, man? Somebody took the phone. Where's the phone, though? Somebody took the phone. Can't even make a phone call over here, man. Somebody took the phone. Oh, sick. Now look at this right here, man. Look at this sign. This is pay on cards only. Hey, what? Not the damn phone. All right, guys. Time to walk the tower bridge. Time to enter the tower bridge. How are you liking London so far, baby girl? Come on, let's go. You can't even come here. How you like London so far, baby girl? How you like in London? It's beautiful. All right, here you go. First time in London. It's like my third time in London. But you know, I have to bring the baby girl so you can see the country. I have that stamp of love. No stamp, no more passport. But she's here. But well, let's go. This is a bridge. Toll bridge. Upstairs. Change this battery. Once I'm finished with this bridge. Hmm. 
guys. Yeah, don't do selfie. Finally. On the Tower Bridge of London. Drawing right picture there. There you go guys, you seen it? Thousands of people come every day. What are the people? Oh come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. So we gotta get out, let's take a walk down the bridge, man. Why not? Why don't I come to London and walk the bridge? Why not? So many people is here. Thousands of people come here every day. <laughs> Thousands of people come here every day. So guys, make sure you give the video a like and share this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Turn your post notification bell on so you can be notified. Once I post my video, a lot of content is going to be coming from London, guys. This one is a tour bus right here. Good. We need a ticket to go up there. Shit. Man, we need to go up there. I don't think we need a ticket to go up there. See right there? See? Explore. Yeah, but I don't know if... I want that's the same. If you know what? Maybe that's probably the same tour to go up there. Okay. Well, oh, that's the line with a ticket. Back that way now. You go back. Huh? Where's she back? Here we go. Here we go. Having a good time here, man. Yeah. Having a good time in London. Do you picture? Yeah. Let's go right here and see what's going on. So, guys, this is the view from the Tower Bridge. London City. Look at that. So you have a boat right there, probably a little cruise something. That's a city cruise boat over there. Um well, we gotta head back. Baby girl. Pictures. <laughs> huh? Time to So we, so we got a guy selling roasted peanuts. So right outside of Tower Bridge, they have a lot of different vendors out here. You know what? We can start walking back now. Vendors, let's start walking back now and go. Let's see. Welcome back now. Just go there now. Let's go back. Tour will be starting in 20 minutes. Let's 
walk down here. This guy is all outside of the tower. Tower right over there. Why are you complaining the weather is hot now, huh? It's not hot. Oh. Well, it was raining. It's just nice. Look at that right there. Look at a boat right there. That's a city cruise boat over there too. The guys because I was a city cruise boat. Look at that. That city cruise boat is about $45 65 dollars. So if you want a little city cruise, you can do that too. City cruise. So here is the spot. What time is it now? 118. We gotta go over to that thing right now. Is where a lot of people go to take the pictures to get the tower bridge right there mm -hmm. yeah. well I'm gonna continue the tour so let's go like the video guys share it subscribe to the channel right here to go into the tower. This is the line. Where? We about to enter. Got my tickets, man. No joke. See? We got your tickets. Two tickets. Come on, let's go. To enter the oh, tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go, the entrance. Yeah, yeah, we need to go down to see if this way is going to take it. Yeah, just have that ready, okay? You said we're ready? Huh? It's not ready? Have it ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so we are going to enter tour. Good morning. Give me a picture real quick. Give me a picture going from the I guess. No, thank you. So, guys, we are about to enter the tower. So guys, we are entering. Is that it? Next please. There you go. Thank you. Next please. Come on, let's go. There's the answer. Need this? Where did we go? Hey, which way do we go? Which way? Okay. So which one's better? The idea of the tour is that we will point stuff out to you, okay. and then you can go off and explore. And you've got an idea of what you're looking at. If you don't enjoy the tour, you can walk away. Doesn't okay, matter. thank you. Do the tour. Go and do the tour first. Okay, thank you. Right. Hmm. I said no.
Yeah. Let's go into the guided tour. Yeah. The guided tour. You say if you don't like the tour, you can just walk on. I'll ride into the tour. Mm. So guys, here we are. Waiting over here to do the guided tour. Or you could go that way and explore it yourself. Uh, my name's Yeoman Warder Darren Hardy, Daz Hardy, yeah, and I'm one of the 35 Yeoman Warder Warders, members of the King's Ceremonial Bodyguard, nicknamed Beef Eaters, that have the privilege, the pleasure, the delight, the wonder to work, and I actually live here within the walls of the tower with my family. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my home, everybody! <laughs> yeah, hope you like what I've done with the place. <laughs> In the summer, I'm actually toying with the idea of maybe putting a jacuzzi, a mini bar over there. Do you think that's a good idea? Yeah. Brilliant. When you're all invited, just bring some fresh towels and some booze. <coughs> Not you kids, those years are yet to come. Right, so I've introduced myself. My name's Darren Hardy. I hail from the northeast of England, a place called Newcastle. What's known in this country as a Geordie. I am a very proud northerner. Right, introduce myself. Up the north, that's it, yes. Um, on that, Hands up, is anybody here from America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand? Put your hands up. Oh. Welcome home, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you never call anymore. <laughs> right, um, right, before we begin, I must warn you, mums and dads, boys and girls, one and all, that my tour contains stories, tits, tales, about murder. Give me new. Ooh. Execution. Ooh. Torture. Ooh. <laughs> How old are you? There's an 11 year old child here getting excited about torture. <laughs> right, shall we begin? Yeah. Our story here begins way back in the year 1066 when William, Duke of Normandy, later known as William the Conqueror, defeats the Anglo Saxon King Harold at the Battle of Hastings. William's crown King William I of England on Christmas Day that same year but he has to continue to fight his newly conquered subjects because they don't take too kindly to Norman domination. William's looking for somewhere to impress and over all the citizens of London, so he chooses a site just inside the uh, old city wall where once an old Roman fort had stood. In fact, within the ancient Roman established city of Londinium. And it's here in the year 1078 that he authorised the building of his first royal palace and fortress of its kind in England. Today, we refer to it as the White Tower, and it's situated just behind those rooftops. And I don't know why you're looking, it's just behind those rooftops. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a much better view of it once we're inside. Right, over the next 200 years, successive monarchs added to the tower's defences. Inner defensive wall, completed in 1220, it's got 13 smaller towers. Outer wall there, completed in 1280, yeah? got six towers all along the south to defend from attack coming up the River Thames. To the north <laughs> of this wall, there's two strong bastions, brass mount, legs mount, uh, that's legs mount on the corner there, and inside there would have been cannons, and that was to defend the tower from that northerly direction. Third line of defence was the moat or ditch, once filled with water, it goes all the way around the tower, and he has stood in it now. And this was dug during the reign of King Edward I. Now the moat was designed to use the tidal flow of the River Thames. Twice a day, 
the river would flow into and around the moat and flush it clean of its stinky, putrid waste. <laughs> that's poo! <laughs> and that stinky, putrid waste <laughs> would make its way down Old Father Thames, across the English Channel, and dump itself on the shores of France. <laughs> Anybody here from France? Did I just get away with that? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. um, I'm only joking, please don't hit me. Yeah. Um, but what did happen was all the rubbish and excrement directed into it from Shoreditch and Houses over there did come in and it stayed here and it stagnated and it became the largest cesspit in Europe. But to be honest, kids, to be perfectly honest, at that time, it was by far the tower's best ever form of defence. <laughs> um, this situation continued for the next 500 years until in 1843, the then constable of the Tower of London, that's the monarch senior re representative here, and at that time, it's a man called the Duke of Wellington. He has permission from Queen Victoria to have our moat drained. This was granted, and he had it filled in with sand and shingle up to the height that you see it today about 4.5 metres high. So to the Americans and readers of the Daily Mail, that's 15 feet. <laughs> OK, um, as I said earlier, this is the first royal palace of its, and fortress of its kind to be built in England. And over the years, it's been used for a number of things, including White Tower, built on the orders of William the Conqueror. That was used as a royal residence right up until the year 1603. Last monarch to live here, King James I. Crown jewels, royal regalia, They've been here since 1303. The Royal Mint was on its in these walls. It's the site of the first Royal Observatory. It was an armory. It was a, a records office, and it's been the Royal Menagerie or Zoo. So the animals given as gifts to the kings and queens here, um, they were here until they were moved to Regent's Park in 1835, London Zoo. And last, but no means least, this first rank is probably one of the most famous or infamous prison complexes in the world. Give me new. Right, talking to prisoners, because you remind me of some. Yeah. <laughs> Just turn around, everybody. And I want to draw your attention up here, beyond the road, OK? Up there is a place called Trinity Square Garden. It stands in an area known as Tower Hill. Some of you may go to the underground at Tower Hill Station, yeah? Now, up there is the site of many executions between the 14th and the 18th centuries. And King Edward IV actually had a permanent execution scaffold erected up there in 1465, which caused much concern in the city of London. And over the years, no less than 75 men of noble birth lost their heads up there by means of the block and the executioner's axe. Now, the first victim was a man called Simon Sudbury, and he was the Archbishop of Canterbury. And he was murdered up there at the hands of peasants during the Peasants' Revolt in 1381 because he had the audacity to introduce a poll tax. <laughs> yeah, I can see some people are pining for the old days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Taxes, yeah. Uh, seven years later, in 1388, the first legal execution on Tower Hill was that of Sir Simon Burley. And by remarkable coincidence, the last victim in 1747 was another Simon. Anybody here called Simon today? <laughs> Hiya, Simon. <laughs> yeah, don't let him leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this man was called Simon Fraser, the Lord Lovett, and he was an 80-year-old Scottish Lord who supported Bonnie Prince Charlie in what we call the Second Jacobite Rebellion. Right, Simon? <laughs> Just for a moment, let's pause, shall we? And imagine the scene up there on a day of execution. Tens of thousands of stinking, filthy, putrid, dirty <laughs> gap. <laughs> right? Go, 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 go. right? Any questions? No. Follow me. Come <laughs> <laughs> gap. Any questions? No. Follow me. For you is quite a shy, retiring man. <laughs> Hurry up! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> right, everybody, I'm going to make a stop. Uh, you know, the road which you're now standing on, it's called Mint Street, because it was here from about the uh, 1279 to 1810 that the vast majority of the coins of the realm were designed and produced. <coughs> um, we're going to find out more about the mint. My resplendent colleague over there, give him a wave. He will tell you all you need to know about coins and things like that, okay? Now the buildings which house the mint are known as the casemates or houses in the wall. They're now used as accommodation for some of my young and water colleagues and their families. For a village community here of about 130 people, okay? So we live in these houses with our wives, our husbands, our husbands, our wives, our boyfriends, our girlfriends, our girlfriends, our boyfriends, our children, our dogs, our cats, our hamsters, our... <laughs> Mother-in-laws! <laughs> <laughs> Just give us a moment. <laughs> right, I'm back in the room. I'm back. Right, uh, behind you to the right, there's a tall, narrow archway there. That's called the Byward Postal Sally Port. That's our royal entrance, yeah? That could be entered at any state of time. Royal entrance. And the gates within that archway, they're original, and they date back more than <coughs> 700 years. Now, it was at those very gates that King Henry VIII have you heard of him? <laughs> Wasn't he a lovely man? <coughs> swipe to the left, swipe to the right. <laughs> Ooh, I can't believe that. Some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Catfish, I think. Yes. Well, he greeted his second wife there, Queen Anne Boleyn, <coughs> mother of Queen Elizabeth I. <laughs> Lovingly and tenderly saying to Anne, I shall love you for the rest <coughs> of your life. <laughs> Koran, of course, was to return to the tower three years later. Very different reason, very different gate. More respectfully on her later. Right to your front here, we've got the bell tower. Strongest of the 13 on the inner wall. As such, it's a perfect prison. But quite a few famous prisoners held within it. But uh, what I'd like to talk about now is maybe somebody you don't know about. <coughs> His name was James Scott Jugal Monmouth. And who was he? Well, he was the eldest of the 16 or so illegitimate children of King Charles II. He's also held in this tower. Now after the death of his father, Charles, in 1685, this handsome, popular, young man, he was persuaded to stake his claim to the throne by virtue of his uncle, King James II, being a Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. So to press home his claim, he landed in a place called Lyme Regis in the west coast of England, and he marched inland, <laughs> gathering popular Protestant support in what is now known as the Monmouth Rebellion. Well, the revolt was crushed at the Battle of Sedgemoor on the 6th of July, 1685. But the Duke, he escaped the battlefield and he evaded capture for a week till he was eventually found hiding, disguised as a shepherd, cowering in a ditch. Condemned to death in his absence, there was no need for a trial. And so, but three days later, he was taken up onto Tower Hill for public beheading. Now, children, who likes bedtime stories? Old time drunk. <laughs> the latter being his greatest ever achievement in life. <laughs> yes, we all have friends like that, don't we? I have 34, they're called human warders. Right. <laughs> now, as Monmouth climbed the steps of the scaffold and realised that Ketch was to be his executioner, he froze. Why? Well, this was the man who had drunkenly botched the beheading of his good friend, Lord Russell, taking three strokes of the axe to sever the head from the body. Do your work well, Monmouth instructed Ketch, and do not use me as I hear you hacked my poor Lord Russell. He then tipped him a generous six gold guineas to do a good job. <laughs> Begged him to strike through, and then he knelt down to await his fate. Now Ketch, visibly shaken by this, rose, raised his heavy axe high above his head in order to dispatch his victim. His first blow merely sliced the scalp on his head. <coughs> the crowd went, oh! oh! The second blow landed squarely between the shoulder blades. The crowd went, oh! But the third blow failed to finish the job and the crowd began to boo and roar in disapproval. Give me a boo! boo! Oh! Ketch bottled it, cast his axe to one side and cried out, God damn me, I can do no more. My heart fails me, I cannot do it. The Sheriff of London ordered Ketch to pick up the axe, get a grip and get on with a bloody job or he'd be next. One to two blows later, 
and the head was still attached by the gristle and the skin. Are we enjoying this story? No. <laughs> right. Where's your parents? <laughs> Who's this child? Yeah. Come on, yeah. order. Madam, yeah. as a doting father of a six and an eight year old who don't like bedtime stories from the father anymore. <laughs> if I can just give you a little bit of parental advice. When he gets home today, yeah. you seriously need to reconsider his TV viewing preference. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens next? He pulls out his butcher's carving knife, pulls his head back to finish the job. Cutting and slicing to the skin, the sinew, the tissue. Am I the only one enjoying himself up here? <laughs> so, strange to relate that both head and body were then brought back into the tower and placed on a table in the chaplain's house, where they were sewn back together. Why? I'll tell you why. He was the son of a king. And they'd forgotten to paint his royal portrait. Oh. <laughs> Best sitting he ever has. And it, the court painter, Sir Godfrey Nello, was then quickly fetched and tasked with this macabre sitting. Afterwards, Monmouth's head and body were then buried beneath the altar in our chapel, where they remain to this day. Now, as for the painting in question, it is allegedly still in the possession of the National Portrait Gallery here in London, portraying Monmouth with a slightly... <laughs> <coughs> Detached look in his eyes. <laughs> Come on, work with me, I don't get out with you. Right, um, enough of this blood and gore. In 85, the River Thames actually washed against that inner defensive wall behind you. When this outer wall was built, the river was moved back and the roadway was raised some 12 feet. That's why we call it Water Lane. And these ancient cobbles which you stood upon now were placed here in the year of our Lord. 1971. Hey, history's got to start somewhere. Yes, they're that old American. Right, Steel Front is probably one of the most famous, I should I say, infamous gates in the world. Traitor's Gate! Give me new! Give me a better room! More like him. Right, that was built on the orders of King Edward I. Yeah, because he required a safer and more useful entrance into the tower. Because rather than it travel through the narrow packed streets of London, where convoys could be attacked, straw stolen, prisoners set free, he decided to use the River Thames as a highway. So at high tide, boats could pass through this gate and unload their cargo in safety. Therefore, <coughs> it was actually originally known as the Watergate. Right, now, I said it's called the Watergate. How then did it become known as Traitor's Gate? Well, this occurred during the Tudor period, and that was down to the large number of alleged traders that entered this mighty fortress through those grim gates. And amongst them, no less than three queens of England. <coughs> Queen Anne Boleyn, Queen Catherine Howard, and Lady Jane Grey are tragic and innocent, uncrowned queen of only nine days. And as I say, more on those later. Right, everybody, can we <coughs> look in this direction, please? So there you can see the bell tower on the bottom right hand side. Called the bell tower. <coughs> got the oldest surviving curfew and alarm bell in the city of London. <coughs> and that current bell there dates from about 1652. But we have had a bell on top of there for about five years. Fascinating. <laughs> Let's have it. Okay. <laughs> Further to the right, you see there what we call the King's <coughs> Now, notice the large window on the top floor above the one with the balcony. Can we see that? Good. Well, that window looks like it's an impressive room known as the Council Chamber. And it was in that very room that Guy Fawkes was interrogated after the failure of the gunpowder plot in November 1605. And he had intended on detonating the supply of gunpowder beneath the Houses of Parliament, thereby killing King James I and all of his important ministers. Now Guy Fawkes, he wouldn't reveal the name of his fellow conspirators, so in orders from the King, he was taken to the dungeons of the White Tower to be subjected to brutal Torture! I was during his time in the White Tower that the Lieutenant of the Tower, a man called Sir William Wadd, very kindly introduced Guy Fawkes. That's my gin. Very kindly introduced Guy Fawkes to the Duke of Exeter's daughter. Now, that doesn't sound too bad, does it? Duke of Exeter's daughter? Anybody here fancy <coughs> meeting up? with the Duke of Exeter's daughter. <laughs> no? 
Come on, America, you love a bit of royalty. <laughs> you know what? Well, you're very wise. You're all very wise indeed. Because she's no ordinary daughter. In fact, she's not a member of the Duke's family at all. The Duke of Exeter's daughter is actually the nickname for one of the most infamous and brutal instruments of torture in the world. The rack. Now, the rack itself consisted of a rectangular metal frame with a roller at both ends and a third in the middle, which was employed to turn the machine's mechanism by way of two levers and a system of rope pulleys. The victim was fastened to the machine by their wrists and ankles. As the wheel of the rack turned, the ropes around their hands and feet tightened. His or her muscle fibres, her muscle fibres were then agonisingly stretched. That's right, ladies, her. Because here in the Tower of London, when it comes to torture, we strongly believe in equal opportunities. <laughs> We're a modern organisation, yes. His or her muscle fibres were then agonisingly stretched until the joints were dislocated and eventually separated. <coughs> the process accompanied by the noise of the snapped cartilage and ligament. Are you still with me, kids? <laughs> yeah, good. After three days of torture, Guy Fawkes has returned to that council chamber, slightly taller, kids, <laughs> and a broken man. And he finally revealed the names of his fellow conspirators. He was taken to trial on accusation of treason and condemned to death. Now, although in this country <clears throat> we still celebrate bonfire night on the 5th of November, November every year, don't we? By the lighting of bonfires and the setting off of fireworks, it's a real jolly affair. We love it here. But it's because of this, it's often wrongly taken to mean that Guy Fawkes was burnt at the stake. We put the effigy of the guy on the bonfire, don't we? Yeah. Wrong. He was to receive one of the most barbaric punishments for his treason imaginable. He was to be hanged, drawn, and quartered. Now, children, <clears throat> Uncle Yeoman Warder Darren Hardy is going to tell you another delightful <laughs> bedtime story. <laughs> Sleep well, kids. <laughs> the process for this method of execution is as follows. The prisoner will be drawn or dragged on a sledge or hurdle through the streets of the city to their place of execution. They'd then be hung by the neck until almost dead, then cut down. Their belly was cut open, bowels taken out, and barbecue. Oh, in the tower. See, a front is down to the enormous piece known as the White Tower. Everything that is built around is built to defend that. Everything that is here is because of that. That is the Tower of London, everybody. Make sure you go in and it's on the south side. If you do not go into the Tower of London, you haven't been to the Tower of London. <laughs> Think about it. Right, on orders from William the Conqueror, work began on that building in 1078. It took 20 years to complete it under the direction of Gundul the Beck. He's the Bishop of Rochester. The tower stands over 90 feet tall and the walls taper in thickness from 15 feet at the base to 11 feet at the top. On each corner, you'll see a turret. Three are square, one is round. See the round one, round seats round the corner, and the first Royal Observatory was established. This guy is a weird tower of London. Now at the top of each turret you'll see a crown in gold leaf. Beneath which you'll see a weather vane showing the royal standard. Now this denotes that we are a royal palace. You're in a royal palace everybody. But we're no longer a royal residence. But don't lose sight of the fact that all our kings and queens lived in there for well over 500 years. Now the royal family, they live merely on the top floor. On the floor below was a banquet hall, a council chamber, accommodation for knights and their ladies, and the Chapel Royal of St John the Evangelist. That's the oldest of the two high chapel royals that we have here at the tower. The lower floor there with the big windows, that was occupied by servants and retainers. Now there's another floor, partly below ground level, where stores and provisions were kept. The part of this floor had a far more sinister use, as a dungeon and torture chamber. Here, the rack and other instruments of torture to be used on poor, unfortunate victims. It was a dark and evil-smelling place, lit only by the candles of the torturers. No sound of the cries of anguish would have been heard outside these thick walls. Today, down there, it is still terrifying because it's now the location of the tower gift shop. <laughs> hey, mums and 
stars beware. No sounds of the cries of anguish result in probably quiet. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, but unlike most Yes, guys, make sure you give the video a like, guys. Share this video. Can't move. Guard right there, man. They can't move. They can't talk until they decide to start moving.
Gotta stay like that until they decide to walk. See the guards there? They can't them scratch if they're itching someone. Wait, Why is it more? Mommy tax. What do you mean there's no more? Excuse me. Mommy, Just finished doing a tour of the crown jewelry, guys. The diamonds and the gold they have over there, guys. Oh my god, they almost blind my eyes, but they don't really want you to uh, film in there and stuff like that. So, so they don't want you to film in there like that, but um, yeah, got a little bit for you guys, but um, time to walk up these stairs here. So let me give you guys a look. So the guys are still in the castle. Yes. What? Mm. 
gotta go in here now. Like, guys, give the video a like, guys. Share this video. Look like I'm just gonna bring us back out to the end. Guys, look at the line to get in here. The crown jewelry. Pretty nice. That's dope. The line is all the way back there. Just like the most. I wonder what's that part up there. Do you want to go up there? I just want to just go. Let's come on, let's go. So guys, this is the line right here to go. This is one like the main attraction of the place. Look at the line to go in the crown jewelry, guys. I understand it's summertime, it's even worse. The people, thousands of people come in. But Sunday's only, it's not even summer yet. Look at that, the line. So guys, I'm on my way out the tower. Go to my next destination. So much people. Oh, he's still over there talking. Oh man, this guy over there gave you a lot of history about the place. But this is what look at some of them. Um, a lot of people live over here. They live over here. Love the people here, guys. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. See all these people over here. Turn it. Guys, right, I'm gonna end this video now. Give this video a like, share, it. subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.